Art Institute of Chicago, one of the great art museums in the world. You also have one of the great art museums here in Cleveland, so don't get too jealous, even though I'm going to talk about this piece from Chicago. On March 15th, 2020, at 6.32 a.m., Amanda Palmer, an artist who's also associated with the faculty of Bard College in Annandale, posted this tweet. It garnered 22,000 likes and 6.6 thousand retweets. Ostensibly, all it shows is a diner that is empty. At first, she didn't credit the artist because she didn't know it, but later on she found out it was Chris Tremblay. Good practice on sharing images is always to give the artist. I am personally going to fail at that in this PowerPoint. So the question that I want to start with and I want to investigate today is why did so many people like and retweet this image? The answer is that it's a pastiche or of a previous work of art and it's one that's trying to think about our current situation. So it's a joke, it's a very serious joke, but it's also deeply rooted in a cultural understanding. And then people that like it and retweet it are people that get the joke. So what's it based on? Edward Hopper's Nighthawks. This is a painting from 1942. And as I mentioned, it is right here in the Art Institute of Chicago. I wanna spend a few minutes on this before we go on to the second part of this lecture, just to point out a couple of things. Notice it's night, right? The street's deserted. Here you can tell there's a shop because of the cash register over there, even though there's no details. We have an advertisement rooting us firmly in kind of uh, middle stage capitalism. And then we have the reference of the title, this idea of the Nighthawk, right? The title's important. It's polyvalent. On the one hand, it refers to people that are up at night, night hawks. On the other hand, there's a predatory language in the ornithological word hawk, right? These are predators. And so what is the story around these figures? Who's the predator of whom? Notice the sharp angles of the men's hats. It's kind of aggressive, as well as the suit cuffs. The woman being in red is highly suggestive, along with um, pointing toward her mouth, which is painted red. The man is handling a cigarette. In terms of the elegance of composition, notice how you have this empty glass, the two salt and pepper shaker, and the napkins. Those all correspond to these figures. So there's just a nice levels of parallelism that happen. This painting becomes enormous, enormously popular. And as a result of its popularity, it becomes well known enough to make fun of. And what I want to do in the time that I'm going to be with you is suggest that this mockery is a form of illusion, which is also a form of adaptation and parody and pastiche. All of these words are, occupy similar spectrum of critical appreciation. Gottfried Hellwein's 1984 version of this, The Boulevard of the Broken Dreams, is perhaps nearly as famous as uh, the original. When I lived in Los Angeles, you see this everywhere. I lived in Hollywood. It's on t-shirts, it's on marquees, it's on posters, it's on cups, it's on um, novelty underwear. So what do you have? Well, everything on this side is the same. Everything here is the same. What has changed are the occupants. Notice the figure whose back we saw before is now turned out. This is James Dean, Humphrey Bogart, Marilyn Monroe, and Elvis Presley. We have some consistency there in terms of the, where the hands are, and Marilyn's in a red dress. We've substituted a coffee cup for the glass, but here again, titles are interesting, right? The broken dreams. And yet, these are four of the most famous performers of the 1950s in America. So there seems to be a suggestion that we've been looking at this semester of the difference between American dream and American nightmare, right? A broken dream is also a form of disillusionment. 
that word that we've been thinking through, especially with American Street and Fun Home, and we'll be doing it again now in Gatsby. So this idea of disillusionment is being captured here. So what's lost with these people? Well, Elvis looks very happy, but of course, being the servant. So you might think about this as, in order to be a successful singer or performer, you are also serving the people. Right? You have to maybe surrender some of your own values in order to achieve great success. Banksy, who's a British artist that if you haven't heard of him, you will at some point. Um, and then you should definitely watch the documentary Exit Through the Gift Shop. Here's his version of this, where you see a drunk soccer star. Uh, there's his alcohol. He's wearing um, Union Jack shorts, and he seems to have just thrown or is pointing at the crack of somebody that was throwing it at this glass window, of course, being a reference to the broken dream itself, because now we have a broken window. Another example, SpongeBob SquarePants in the um, children's book, The Art Contest, at one point produces his own version of this. Notice he signs it SpongeBob. And you can think about if you agree with who he chose. This whole book is based on well-known works of art that you need to know in order to understand the joke. And of course, that's one of the issues. Do you actually need to know these things in order to understand the joke? One of my favorites, this shows C-3PO and R2-D2 of Star Wars standing outside, this being a reference to Moss Eisley Cantina and the idea that we don't serve their kind here in reference to the droids, so the droids have to be outside. Here we have the members of the original painting, and then here we have the intel of Moss Eisley. This is a rather fascinating version of the original Nighthawks because it's, we have some text, right? We get, times have changed, huh? Well, what's changed? Notice. It's now a McDonald's, instead of that being an advertisement for the Phillies cigar, all this ad. The place across, which was closed before, is now open at night because it's a Starbucks. So what has changed? Well, now we're in kind of late stage capitalism. It's, this fellow shows a real awareness. He's aware that he was in a previous painting, it seems, in a really playful way. This is another one of my favorites. Um, You'll notice it almost looks exactly like the original, except for this figure. This is Keanu Reeves. And what's so fun is this is actually a reference to another image that had become a meme called Sad Keanu Reeves. And so somebody has taken this other meme and inserted it into this painting that is now being memed. So it's uh, very fun, very interactive. This is an image that you might not recognize, but this, has to, this is referencing uh, Alan Moore's Watchmen. This is a book that you will read next year. Over here, this says, Who Watches the Watchmen? Quis Custodiet Custodes, a very famous line from it, as well as being a line from the Roman poet Juvenal. And so in three years, try to remember that this exists and you can bring it up in class. So, now, what's going on with Amanda Palmer's text? Well, she's removed all the figures. Why? It's a reference to social distancing. So that's what people are resharing and liking about it is nobody's going out, right? So your business are shut down. People are behaving in a responsible way in response to the coronavirus. So all that work to unpack the popularity of this tweet. I hope you enjoyed it there's going to be a few different responses that you can throw up on the forum. The first critical response, and you just, you know, I just want you to pick one of these or all of them, however busy you are. Search for a version of Nighthawks and a form of media you enjoy. So you could like, pick an anime that you like or a movie, anything like that. If something comes up, share the link and say if it is a successful adaptation or not. Like what's going on? Is it just a quick plug and chug or have they thought hard about who's going to be in the different locations? Critical B, do, and this is a theoretical question, do you need to know the original work of art to understand and appreciate the adaptation or is there space to just like it on its own? Two creative responses. Just 
who would you put in the position of the solitary man who's here, the couple who are here, the worker who is here, and the advertisement, right? If you were to make your own, just who would you plug in? Creative B, write the story of what one person in the original image is thinking. What's going, why is that man there? What's the worker thinking about? What's the woman, what's going through her brain or the man? All right, I will see you again tomorrow for Gatsby chapter two. Until then, enjoy.